Hello and welcome to the presentation today, which is Child Protection at ARIS. My name is Dr. Funke Bafo Obora, and I am currently the head of counseling support at our Ryan. And today's presentation is really to get you up to speed with what we're discussing with our learners, our students about child protection, how to keep themselves safe. So this is just a guide on some of the things that we've been discussing. And if you do have any comments, feel free to contact me or any member of the wellbeing team. So child protection and safeguarding at ARIS, what are we actually doing to keep our learners free from harm? So as we go through the slides, I'll explain what harm means, what child protection means. But what is crucial is that we are committed and you know, conserving and really safeguarding the welfare of all the children in our school. And you know, it's really, we have to take these practical steps to support best safe practices in order to protect all the children from harm, abuse, and exploitation. And we base this really on our vision and mission and core values of respect, integrity, and accountability. And, and we're so passionate about really seeking to create and maintain an empowering school environment that is free from harassment and mistreatment. So students should feel that they're in a safe place, safe space, so that we ensure the same in our work with all of the students and the communities that we serve. But let's go into a bit of different definitions now about what is abuse. You may hear child abuse and sometimes you know, until we kind of explain it, not many people know what child abuse is, but child abuse really in itself is any physical, sexual, verbal, or emotional act that causes harm to a child. Also, that bearing in mind, there's also neglect. So these are the, um, are the parameters that we look at child abuse. And then there are indicators for each one, which we do discuss with um, our learners. So child protection, now this is an act that seeks to promote well-being of children and to prevent abuse and protect them from harm. So this is how our whole ethos about the Irish child protection is that how are we seeking to promote well-being? You may hear us talking a lot about well-being over the years and child protection is really a key aspect of well-being at Aris. Now I've mentioned harm in the two above points. Now harm, this is any damaging or detrimental effects on a child's physical, social, emotional well-being. It's important that we look at each aspect, and that is why child abuse has those different um, domains in physical, sexual, and emotional, because the same way as harm, how, how damaging and detrimental effects is it on the child's physical, social, and emotional well-being. Okay, at ARIS, the way we acknowledge abuse um, is based on these four points that I'm going to highlight. We really look about the parties involved. Now, abuse can occur between two learners, and in some places, this is called pair-on-pair -pair abuse, and this can include bullying. Also, a teacher or community member against the learner, a caregiver against the learner, or a stranger against the learner. So we make sure that we look at who are the parties involved concerning child protection. We also consider online um, considerations and uh, so that although this is not in person, but as we take it very seriously, um, you know that with the pandemic, there's been a lot of bullying. So we really have to put this in the heart and center of what our protection is about. And we also do consider um, the cultural aspects. So definitions and implications of abuse can vary from culture to culture. So we look at the context and how it, it was, what is a law in one country may not be a law in, in another. Like for instance, in Ghana, even though corporal punishment is slight now, it's getting out of schools, but it still has something in their act that corporal punishment can still be in the home if it's done in, in line with what they've highlighted. Now, when we talk about intent and in line with what I've just talked about in corporal punishment and abuse, they can be in differentiated in terms of what was the intent? Was the intention to cause harm or was it to uh, effectively discipline it? Um, yeah, so, and this one brings up a lot of discussions. You know, when we were working with our students, they did talk about, oh, well, I'm not abused. Um, I, my, my parents discipline me. And if they don't discipline me, then I won't understand. So you really have to understand the context. Whereas this was in another country, this may be considered as abuse. So, um, so intent and cultural consideration is very crucial in what we do at here at Aris. Now, signs and symptoms of abuse. So these are the things like kind of like an indicator. And it's not just these, because you may realize that this might be some signs and symptoms may be related to someone going through their general adolescence, going through their so-called identity crisis. But 
we need to look at that and match things up. So some of the signs and symptoms of abuse could be um, child becomes withdrawn and they just disconnect with things that they used to enjoy. And they just and they start discussing a particular person at length that you actually don't know. Um, their eating or sleeping patterns can change whether they're eating too much or eating too little or sleeping too much or sleeping too little. There may be a rise in their anxiety and they may become hypervigilant of sounds and so, so forth. They may have these mood swings that I cannot kind of account to whatever I remember I said about the normal um, adolescence or something else that might be going on in the family. They may decrease in their personal hygiene and they may have age inappropriate conversations. So if you're hearing a five-year-old talk about something that's quite explicit, you have to question, is this a, is this a form of abuse that he uh, that child has experienced or seen, or maybe they're watching something on TV that they relate. So we really make sure that um, we get all the information. And as a parent, you may, or a guardian may look at this and think, okay, where does my child get this from? They may have unexplained marks or bruises. Um, an unusual relationship with other children. Children, remember we said that we're now looking at peer on peer abuse more in more detail than we've ever have. Um, I think in the last three years around the world, peer on peer abuse is now being considered a, an actual abuse. And then there may be a sudden resistance to go to school or another activity that they previously enjoyed. And as I said, these are not set in stone, but some indicators to think about and explore further. Now, how do we work to ensure that your learner is safe with us? Um, we have a hiring process and that all staff or interns are required to have a background check and a police report and they're required to sign our child protection policy and that they understand how we operate as a school. And our policy is quite um, comprehensive, it's consistent and it's backed up with local laws, UN guidelines and our personal goals towards safeguarding. And um, then there's trainings and you hear about we're training the students, but we're also training the teachers. Um, at the beginning of the academic year, we run through our ARIS policy in detail. We give them assignments to do with that. And then they have another eight sessions throughout the year, which is based on our comprehensive um, ARIS policy. And if you do want to get access to our policy, please do go to our website and it's outlined there and give us any feedback if you have any. Okay, so um, we also have child protection officers and I've introduced myself. Um, I'm a child protection officer and also Sarah, Madam Sarah at Primary, she supports me in that process. And by having a child protection officer, it's kind of giving students a sense of how things are, um, how things go about. So if there is a report, a student can come and self-report, a student can report on another student, a teacher can report, and then we will explore and see what um, goes, um, what happens further. In our policy, we've got it more clearly outlined. Now, as I said, students and teachers are encouraged to report any concerns um, to the child protection officer. And what we've been doing with the training this year is that making sure that they're aware of who the child protection officers are. And they're aware that they don't, they don't have to come directly to the child protection officer. They may find a trusted teacher. So we're really supporting um, our students to understand the process of our child protection um, reporting lines. Then we have online safety. And now we, we work to educate our learners about the potential dangers of some online activities. And I'm sure you as a parent are aware of this too and how to safeguard themselves online. Oops, so apologies for that. Then we have well-being, and you may realize, or you might be a new parent, but we have a well-being um, program that runs from PYP 3-4 up into DP2, and these are weekly well-being um, lessons, and it's really for students to share their concerns, discuss their feelings, um, learn about social and emotional skills. It's a skills-based program, and we want to help our learners to be, and your children to be, um, more resilient in, in, in and develop those skills as they navigate through their lives as children, adolescents, and soon to be adults. Um, and they learn about personal autonomy, they learn about boundaries and their right to be free from harm. Um, students are taught about the specific rights and how to advocate for these rights and ask for help when needed. So when we was delivering this training to um, students, obviously for the primary and the lower secondary, it was more kind of hands-on and practical. And then as, a, as the year 10 upwards, we gave them more specifics and examples and um, based on our policy. Our policy, excuse me. And then we have individual counseling, uh, myself and Madam Sarah, 
and Madam Priscilla, who's part of the counselling team. And we offer individual counselling in students in need. You may refer a child, um, students refer themselves, and we accept referrals all around, basically. And it's, as long as we know that we can ensure the safety of learners, that is our paramount goal. Clicking all these buttons. I think finally, um, you know your child best. And if you feel that your learner may be hiding something or they're struggling with something emotionally, um, please do not waste any time. Please do not hesitate. Just contact us or and refer them to us and, and we will take it from there. And if there's any concerns you may have about another child, please contact us. And as a community, we want to strive and we want to make it safe. And as I highlighted in, in the previous slides, what our role is, is to make our community feel safe, not just our learners, all members of our community. So do reach out to us. And if you have any questions about our policy and how it's being relayed and discussed with your learners, feel free to contact me or Madam Sarah at any time. Thank you for listening to me. And um, I will be in touch throughout the course of the year to give you updates on what we're doing in terms of wellbeing. And um, I look forward to meeting you soon, whether it's online or in person. So have a wonderful day and thank you for your time today. <laughs>